Let's imagine that I plant two test plots of corn growing on a farm. Here's plot A, and here's plot B. In these two plots, I plant two inbred strains of corn, which means that in each plot, let's say in plot A, all of the plants in plot A are genetically identical to each other. However, even though they're genetically identical, if we measure, let's say, the height of each corn plant, we'll find that there are still minute differences because each plant is subject to subtly different amounts of rain or sun or nutrients, those kinds of things. And so if we draw the distribution of the phenotypes of the plants, of the individuals in each plot, we'll find that these quantitative traits are distributed normally. And so each of these has some mean mu and some variance sigma squared But remember that all of this variation was due to environmental influence because these plants are all genetically identif uh, I excuse me genetically identical which means that all of this variance is due to variation in the environment and this kind of environmental variance we'll call sigma squared e Sorry, those should definitely have squares on them. So now, let's imagine that we allow the plants in these two plots to cross. These F1 plants are all genetically identical as well because each plant received the same set of alleles from the parent in plot A and the parent in plot B. And so when we look at the distribution of the plants from our F1 plot, we find that they're still quite tightly distributed, right? Sigma squared of the F1. The only variance here, the only spread here remains due to environmental differences, right? This is still environmental variance. But the mean, as you can see, has moved to be between the means of our A distribution and our B distribution. Now, let's allow these, let's allow these plants to cross with each other. To make some F2 plants. And something interesting happens in the F2 generation. The mean stays the same, but the distribution grows wider. The variation grows, the variance of this distribution grows, and that is because not all of these F2 plants are identical to each other. Right? Because of independent assortment, some plants have more alleles from this strain. Some plants have more alleles from that strain. Right? This additional variation due to genotypic variation gets added to the total variation of the phenotype. Right? And so we write this genotypic variance, sigma squared g, And we say that the total phenotypic variance is the sum of those. And hopefully this is making some intuitive sense, right? That the variation, the variance of a distribution of individuals can come from different places, right? 
it could be due to differences in their genotype, the individual's genotype. It could be due to differences in the, uh, in the environment, right? And this is the definition of a complex trait, right? But there's one more thing I want to draw your attention to because all we can measure directly is this phenotypic variance. But if we're measuring an inbred strain where there is no genotypic variance because all of those individuals are genetically identical, then in, that, in the case of an inbred strain, our genotypic variance is zero. There is no differences in genotype from, in, from one individual to the next, which means that the phenotypic variance is equal to the environmental variance, right? You can directly measure the environmental variance if what you are looking at is an inbred strain where there is no genotypic variance, where there is no gen uh, genotypic variation between individuals. We can also flip this around because if we have estimated the environmental variance, right, of plots on, on this farm, for example, and then we go ahead and look at a set of plants or a set of other individuals that have some genotypic invariance and uh, some genotypic variance in, in their phenotype, we have an estimate of the, of, of the uh, phenotypic variance due to the environment. We can then go ahead and estimate the rest of it, right? We can estimate the genotypic variance, right? Because once we have an estimate of sigma squared e, then sigma squared g is simply the total amount of phenotypic variance that we measure minus our estimate of the amount of variance due to the environment, right? And it turns out that this estimate of genotypic variance, right, the amount of phenotypic variance that we see due to changes in genotype is particularly important when we want to ask a fairly, a fairly reasonable question, which is how heritable is this trait? That is the question we consider next.